It's recently been announced that the American actor Bruce Willis has aphasia, and I'm going to explain what this means, and I'm going to talk about a specific condition called primary progressive aphasia. Now, just to be clear, I don't know Bruce Willis. I haven't evaluated him, so I'm really just speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. I'm not diagnosing anyone. This is just for informational purposes. Now, Bruce Willis is a great American actor. He was in Armageddon, the Die Hard series, and my favorite movie of all time, Pulp Fiction. He's not to be confused with Hall of Fame shortstop Cal Ripken Jr. And he's been famous for a really long time, made tons of movies, and he's filmed some more recently, apparently despite having this condition, but he's recently announced that he has to retire because he can no longer work as an actor due to his language impairment. Now, aphasia is really a symptom, not a diagnosis. It's similar to vertigo or weakness, which of course can have many causes. Now, it turns out that language is controlled by the cortex of the brain in the frontal and temporal lobes. And there are a lot of different causes. Most commonly, it's caused by a specific injury, such as a stroke, brain tumor, abscess, or traumatic brain injury. But if you had one of those conditions, you would typically say, I have a brain tumor with language impairment. But the suggestion that he has a progressive condition with aphasia suggests he could have the condition primary progressive aphasia, which I'm going to explain in this video. Now, first, a little background on neuroanatomy. It turns out that in right-handed people, the left brain is usually dominant for language. And generally speaking, the sensory aspect of language is controlled by an area in the temporal lobe called Wernicke's area. So this is the ability to understand language and read, whereas an area in the frontal lobe called Broca's area controls the production of speech and the ability to write. And sometimes people can have an injury of the fibers connecting these two areas and have what's known as conduction aphasia. And they may actually have fluent speech and good comprehension, but have difficulty with things like repeating words and phrases because they have difficulty getting information from Wernicke's area to Broca's area. Now, interestingly, Bruce Willis happens to be left-handed. And for left-handed people, the dominance is not always on the left side, but about 66% of the time, left-handed people still have left brain dominance for language. And sometimes, it's right brain dominance, and sometimes they can actually have co-dominance. So in Bruce Willis's case, he could in theory have an injury to the right brain, which is less common, but we see it in left-handed individuals. Now, language is different from the mechanical production of speech, and so just to be clear, aphasia refers to a true language disability, whereas dysarthria refers to difficulty with mechanical production of words. But people with aphasia can have difficulty with all forms of symbolic language, including reading, writing, and other forms of symbolic language as well. Now, like I said, there are a lot of different causes of aphasia, but there is a specific condition, primary progressive aphasia, which is classified in the dementias. And the reason is because it can have similar features and is caused by accumulation of abnormal proteins in the neurons of the brain. And I'll talk about some specific subtypes. So there are three main clinical classifications of primary progressive aphasia. One is called progressive non-fluent aphasia, and this is associated with injury to the left frontal lobe, at least in a right-handed person. And sometimes on MRI scans, we can see very impressive atrophy or shrinkage of that area of the brain that's very asymmetric. The right side of the brain could look normal, and the left side of the brain could look very shrunken. And people with progressive non-fluent aphasia, they usually have preserved comprehension and preserved reading ability, and often preserve memory and other cognitive functions early in the course of the disease, but have very impaired production of speech. For instance, one of my patients who had this condition, he came in with his wife, and his wife basically had to do all the talking. He could barely get out a sentence. But when I did formal cognitive testing on him, he could understand everything and actually had really good short-term memory and good executive function. He just specifically had a language impairment. And that's why the condition is called primary progressive aphasia, because early in the condition, aphasia can be the only symptom. And normally we think of dementias as conditions that affect memory and cognitive function 
function. But it's kind of unique that primary progressive aphasia, at least early on, can only affect language, at least in some individuals. So that's one type and known as primary non-fluent aphasia. Another type is called semantic dementia, and this is where there's more atrophy of the temporal lobe, and people can have more problems with comprehension of speech, and they may be able to produce fluent sentences, but they're often gibberish or filled with jargon or nonsensical, and this can be very, very impairing. There's a third form of primary progressive aphasia called logopenic progressive aphasia. And this is where people may have relatively good comprehension and produce fluent sentences, but they have very great difficulty finding words and naming things. And it's thought to do, be due to impairment of short-term memory with respects to language. And this is actually associated with Alzheimer's disease, and people with this type of primary progressive aphasia, as the disease progresses, often have other features of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's disease. Now, there's some correlation between the cause of the disease and the clinical phenotypes that I just described. So as I mentioned, logopenic progressive aphasia is associated with Alzheimer's disease, and when people have done autopsy studies, they've often found amyloid plaques, abnormal proteins in the neurons that are characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. People with progressive non-fluent aphasia often have tau, an abnormal protein that's associated with other neurological diseases, such as frontotemporal lobar degeneration. Whereas people who have semantic dementia and atrophy of the temporal lobes tend to have accumulation of a protein called TDP43, which is associated with some other neurological diseases, such as Lou Gehrig's disease. So there's definitely a correlation between the pathology and the clinical phenotype, but it's not perfect. Different causes can cause the same symptoms in many people. Now, these diseases tend to be progressive over time, but the progression is highly variable. Some people can be stable for long periods of time. The patient that had progressive non-fluent aphasia I described earlier, he actually had very slow progression of symptoms, and he was able to live independently, take his own medications, prepare his own food, really do everything. It's just that he had very impaired speech, and this went on for several, several years. Other people can have a more rapid progression where it starts off with aphasia, and then they go on and have other cognitive problems or personality changes. Now, there's a neurodegenerative disease that's closely related to primary progressive aphasia, which is frontotemporal lobar degeneration. And this is where, unlike Alzheimer's disease, people tend to have selective atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobes, whereas in Alzheimer's disease, people tend to have atrophy throughout the entire brain, maybe sparing the occipital lobes. But the parietal lobes are spared in people with frontotemporal lobar degeneration. And classically, it's associated with relatively preserved short-term memory early in the disease, but very impaired executive function and sometimes prominent personality changes. For example, I had a patient with this condition who is 90 years old. He developed this irritability and hypersexuality, and it caused a problem with his younger wife because he was very hypersexual, constantly wanting sex. And that's characteristic of frontotemporal lobar degeneration. And there's kind of an association between primary progressive aphasia and frontotemporal lobar degeneration generation where as the disease advances, people can develop characteristics of this condition unless they have logopenic progressive aphasia, in which case they're more likely to develop other symptoms of Alzheimer's disease because the pathology is the same. So what causes primary progressive aphasia? This is a very rare disease, maybe affecting only approximately 1 in 10,000 people, unlike other dementias that are quite common as people get older. The average age of onset is around the late 50s, but it's been reported to occur as early as the 30s or as late as the 80s. But interestingly, the rate seems to decline in the very old. So people over age 80, they don't typically get primary progressive aphasia, whereas other conditions like Alzheimer's disease, the rate is very high. And in fact, the risk of dementia overall increases as your age gets older. And if you live to over age 105, you have a greater than 50% risk of dementia. Now, people have looked for like lifestyle factors or other risk factors for primary progressive aphasia, but essentially nothing has been found. It's not really a genetic disease. It's mostly a sporadic disease. It's very rare for it to occur in multiple people in the same family. 
and there really aren't a lot of risk factors. According to one study, people or men with primary progressive aphasia have a higher rate of having a history of vasectomy compared to the general population, but in my opinion, this is likely a chance effect. It's very unlikely that vasectomy would cause this. This is probably just a random chance sort of outcome in a research study. Now, right now, there's really not a specific treatment for primary progressive aphasia, just supportive care and working with a speech pathologist in order to help minimize the deficits and sort of work around the problems. So it was reported that Bruce Willis has had problems for several years, and he was noted to maybe have some cognitive impairment, although some people can misinterpret language impairment for cognitive impairment because it's difficult to discern that if you're a layperson. And maybe he even had to use an earpiece while acting because he had difficulty producing his lines, so he needed a little bit of help, and he needed a personal assistant to kind of help him get through the acting jobs. Um, now, it's not really known if there would be any specific treatment for this. There are actually a lot of ongoing studies to develop treatments for this type of disorder in general. In other words, abnormal accumulation of protein in the brain. For example, for Alzheimer's disease, there's an approved drug called Aduhelm, which could in theory help people with the logopenic progressive aphasia variant of this, although I have a lot of skepticism about whether this drug works for anyone with Alzheimer's disease, and you can see a separate video on that if you want to take a look. But there are monoclonal antibodies being developed against tau, which could be beneficial to people with this condition in the future. There's also some ongoing research on experimental therapies such as transcranial magnetic stimulation of the brain, which could be beneficial, although these are unproven treatments. Anyways, uh, I hope this was informative. Again, I'm just speculating. I don't, I'm not making a diagnosis in Bruce Willis, but hopefully this brings more attention to this class of degenerative uh, diseases that will help other people with similar conditions in the future. I really uh, like Bruce Willis. I always enjoyed his movies. I hope he's enjoying his retirement and enjoying life in general. I think in our society, we have a lot of respect for the idea of kind of going out on top, like Michael Jordan retiring after six championships. But I always respected people who try to continue to work and be productive despite adversity. For instance, Albert Pujols going back to the Cardinals to try to you know, continue to be productive despite being over age 40 and having injuries. And just imagine Bruce Willis had a language disorder and still continued to work as a professional actor for years. Uh, imagine how difficult that must be. But as I said, a lot of people with primary progressive aphasia, they actually have preserved cognition and short-term memory. So unless the language impairment is very severe, it may be possible to work as an actor. So I have a lot of respect for what he did, and I look forward to watching some of the movies that he filmed later to just admire the achievement of, of doing that despite having a significant language impairment. Anyways, if you have any questions or requests for future videos, please post in the comments below.